everyone. Uh, my name is Thais Real Martins. Uh, I work here at BCC for many years, maybe 13 years. Um, I came to BCC as an ESL student, and I stay here. <laughs> this is like my second house. Um, so every year, we celebrate the Hispanic Latino History Month here at BCC, and we recognize someone from the community for helping the Latino community in the area. And this year, we have the pleasure to recognize uh, Roberto Gonzalez um, as the recipient award for this year. Uh, so welcome, everyone. And uh, I would like now to introduce um, Milton Clement. He's going to talk a little bit about the great job that Roberto Gonzalez has done for the Hispanic community in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Thais. Good afternoon. I didn't hear you. What was that? <laughs> we're small, but we're strong. We're very powerful, very powerful voices here. It um, gives me great pride to uh, mention, uh, say a few words about our recipient, uh, Mr. Roberto Gonzalez. He is the, uh, an immigration attorney. Uh, he has his practice in East Providence, but he works with clients from all over the region. Uh, many, as you can imagine, many federal cases. Uh, Roberto's been involved in community activism for many years. I won't say how many, but I remember when he used to have long, flowing, dark hair. <laughs> um, actually, our, our, our relationship goes back <clears throat> excuse me, quite a few years. Uh, Roberto's been involved in organizations such as the OIC, which is the uh, Op um, Opportunities and Industrialization Center in Providence, which is a manpower development educational program. Uh, he's been on the board of directors for uh, the International Institute in Rhode Island. Um, and he's probably worked with most, most of our Latino, Hispanic organizations throughout Rhode Island. Um, Robert was the first Hispanic who was appointed to a judgeship in the state of Rhode Island when he served uh, as a judge on the Providence Housing Court, working for tenants, working for the people, working for the community. So it's really an honor to uh, recognize Robert for all the work he's done. Also for you trio people, Robert was also director of the Upward Bound program at Rhode Island College many years ago. So uh, he has had a well, uh, long distinguished career. He's made some great contributions and I feel he's very deserving of this award. So I'm going to ask President Spraker to come forward please and, and uh, present the award to Robert Gonzalez. Well, thank you, Milton, and uh, it is indeed an honor to uh, participate in this uh, event. Uh, I did want to mention uh, <clears throat> that we celebrate diversity at, at Bristol Community College, and this is uh, just one of the many demonstrations that we have of that celebration and that commitment uh, to diversity. It, it makes us all stronger. It informs our uh, classroom discussions. It informs our... Uh, uh, campus activities uh, and so diversity makes us a stronger institution and I'm very proud to say that uh, uh, in the years that I've been here since I arrived in 2000 the minority student population has grown some 260 percent so we're very proud of that and uh, 160 percent of uh, minority employee increase so we're very, you know, very proud of our commitment to diversity, how it strengthens the institution. Another thing I always say at these events is that it's not just a 31-day commitment in October and 28 days of our African American History Month and things like that. This is a 24-7, 365 commitment that the Bristol community has to diversity. And uh, we will continue uh, to boast about our uh, great strengths 
and uh, and uh, you know it is a, a great pleasure uh, to have a ceremony like this where we recognize uh, individuals uh, uh, for their stellar achievements, but also uh, take into account uh, the larger context of Hispanic Latino uh, uh, celebration. Uh, you know the uh, demographic. Uh, statistics, uh, I think by 2030, by the year 2030, the Hispanic population will be uh, uh, no longer a minority, I believe. Uh, so uh, uh, that day is coming and we can all uh, rejoice that uh, uh, no matter what the, uh, what the uh, constituency might, the sub-constituency might be, that we're all Americans and making the United States uh, an even stronger country. So with that all said, I would like to invite uh, our recipient here uh, to come up to the platform and I hope that he can say a few words for us. Roberto Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's very nice. <laughs> Buenas tardes. I am truly honored uh, and humbled uh, to be here and to accept uh, this award. Uh, I want to thank my, my good friend Milton, um, who um, I have a lot of uh, respect for and admiration for the work he, he's done over the years. Uh, so when he called me and invited me, uh, it was a, a, a very easy yes. <laughs> So, so thank you so much. I, I just want to um, tell you that I consider myself very, very fortunate. Um, um, I have, uh, over the years, had many opportunities to learn uh, from some of the best people um, in this area, uh, starting when I was a teenager in New York City uh, from the uh, Speed Up program. Uh, and their leadership development uh, program. I don't know if, uh, if, if you're aware of this uh, great organization that, that started uh, over uh, 60 years ago in New York City and uh, has produced uh, tremendous leaders. Uh, and and uh, I learned how to organize people. I learned how to uh, conduct meetings. I learned um, how to uh, fight. Uh, for rights of people who were either underrepresented uh, or who were uh, being trampled uh, by, by others. And um, from Aspira, I, I moved to Rhode Island and, and I had uh, the fortune of working with uh, one of the people that I consider to be one of the best community organizers in this area. And I mean this whole area. And that was a gentleman by the name of Charlie Forts. Uh, who was a merchant marine turned community organizer, Saul Alinsky type organizer. And he also taught at Rhode Island College where I went to school. And he took me under his wing and uh, you know, he said, look, I can see the passion that you have and I want, I want to show you a few tricks of the trade. So he showed me how to organize a protest. And you don't know how powerful that was, uh, you know, when a utility company was threatening to shut down uh, power to uh, groups of people who couldn't pay. Um, and, and we could organize a group of people to go out in front of the utility company with placards and, um, and call the local uh, television and newspaper to come out and cover it. Um, the company was reversing its policies the next day. Uh, and we did that with other groups. Wherever uh, we saw injustice, we found people who were passionate about the injustice, about righting uh, the wrongs. And, and that's one of the things that, that I was able to, to um, learn from Charlie Forts. When I went to Rhode Island College, uh, it's great to hear the president talk about how the um, the enrollment of Latinos and minorities has increased over the years. When I was at Rhode Island College as an undergrad, um, the minority enrollment was like 0.3% or something like that. 
And uh, now I believe it's somewhere in the 30 or 40 percent. I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the statistics. So, um, but, uh, you know, we organized a committee of faculty, of administrators that thought that that was wrong and that wanted to do something about it. And we started meeting. Um, and, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it takes you away from the things that you may like to do. I'm not a golfer. Okay, <laughs> because there's no time for golfing. My, I, not that there's anything wrong with you know chasing a little white ball around the <laughs> golf course for you know four or five hours. It's just there's no time uh, for that. And and um, you know when when at Rhode Island College when we were able to to start meeting and come up with ideas, concrete ideas. You know how we're gonna go out and recruit and 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 how we're gonna attract people uh, to the college. And then how are we going to deal with some of the faculty who were not very welcoming of these populations. Um, you know, these little prejudices that some of, some of our people have, um, um, you know, they translate to poor grades, to uh, just uh, uh, not giving the kind of uh, guidance to the students. So we started working on those things and we set up meetings with the academic deans and we said, look, you have some bad apples here. We need to either counsel them to become better teachers and more welcoming, or we need to counsel them out of their jobs. And we did that. And, and you know, we stuck to our guns and, and um, you know, things started changing. And for me, it was a natural fit to go on to work for the Upward Bound program uh, when I left Rhode Island College. And I, I, I was so passionate. I still think that that's the best job I ever had in my life. Although I love what I do today, but working with young minds and helping them see their potential and helping them achieve. And it does so much for me today when I bump into one of those uh, students uh, who is now a professional. Uh, a, you know, it could be a doctor, it could be a teacher, it could be the night commander for the Providence Police Department. I mean, that program has, does, has done wonders, uh, not only for these students, but also for these institutions where these programs have been founded. And I'm a strong supporter of the TRIO programs, and I hope you know, that the TRIO programs stick around for, for a long, long time. I also worked with the Education Opportunity Center, and I was the director of that program uh, for a good number of years. And from there, I decided that I wanted to become an abogado. An abogado is a lawyer, and the word abogado means advocate. And that's what I love to do. I love to advocate, and um, today I advocate for immigrants because I think immigrants right now are the people that need the most help in this country, particularly the undocumented immigrants. And we fought hard last, last year and the year before to get um, in-state tuition approved in the state of Rhode Island. And we now have in-state tuitions. So that means any student, regardless of what their immigration status is, can pay the in-state rate. And that's a wonderful thing. And now we're fighting for driver's licenses uh, for undocumented immigrants. It doesn't make sense to me that just because someone is undocumented, that they should not be allowed the right to drive their car, to take their kids to school, to go to their jobs, to go shopping. It just doesn't make sense. It's bad policy, and it's bad for, on the economic front. These people are willing to pay for insurance. They're willing to pay the registration fees, the license fees. So we're fighting hard for that. And wherever I see an injustice, and I don't know what it'll be tomorrow, I'm going to advocate, and I'm going to fight hard. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for this recognition. Thank you so much. Roberto Gonzalez Esquire, ladies and gentlemen. 2013 recipient. Well, thank you for those inspiring remarks. Uh, uh, the, uh, you know, I'm reminded that uh, when you hear him speak of uh, uh, Martin Luther King uh, Jr., who was, uh, when he was in the Birmingham jail, uh, some of the minister colleagues would say, Martin, why are you doing this? You're just causing criticism of uh, African-American ministers. And he said, well, I'm here because injustice is here. 
And that's the way we, I felt listening to your remarks, where you see injustice, you fight and strike out against it. Thank you so much for all you do. Well, I also want to thank uh, Tahis Riel Martin for your great work in uh, leading the committee. We have a committee uh, to work on Hispanic uh, uh, Latino Month, uh, Heritage Month. Uh, uh, Milton, I want to thank you. Uh, Milton is our Director of Minority Student Affairs uh, and a Minority Student Center, a vast, vast center that we have uh, for you to take care of. Uh, I want to recognize uh, Professor uh, Soren Triff uh, uh, for his great work. Uh, and uh, I, lastly, I just want to mention we have some food uh, and uh, uh, Hispanic flavored food, is it? <laughs> and uh, I thank the committee. I thank uh, Tahis and everyone who helped participate in this. And again, congratulations to our award winner, Roberto Gonzalez Esquire. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Please enjoy the food. <laughs>